What's going on, everyone? Happy Tuesday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Tuesday edition of the Pandemic Update for Tuesday, August 13th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and any other virus that could be a health threat to you. Let's face it. We are in a massive summer surge right now. In fact, this is one of the biggest summer surges we have seen since the start of the pandemic. That's right. This is a really big surge right now. And you need to be informed with what's going on with this surge, COVID wave, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of people sick right now. I'm getting a lot of comments lately of people knowing people who are sick, people in their family that are sick. I'm seeing it all over social media, Twitter. Facebook, Instagram, you name it. I am seeing a lot of people saying they're sick right now, and we're in the middle of August. It's a little bit early for cold and flu season. That doesn't start up until fall. So right now, you need to be informed with what's going on. That's my job here. That's what I'm going to do for you today. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. Give this a thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe down below. Hit that notification bell. Share these videos with anyone you know. Leave your comments down below below all right we do have several news stories to talk about we're going to do that first and we're going to take a look at some data there is some data that's showing up in wastewater that's saying hey wait a second some places that were dropping may actually be starting to rise once again in the u.s yes this has been a very long wave it started back in june and here we are in august middle of august and it's taking a very long time for it to peak or even try to drop at this point. Starting off with New Zealand today. COVID-19 update. 1,666 new cases with 26 further deaths. And there were also 93 cases in the hospital at this time. Dr. Fauci. You know who Dr. Fauci is. Dr. Fauci has once again tested positive for COVID. And I've heard some stories say this is the third time. At first, I was like, no, I only remember two times. Well, turns out this is his third time. Remember back in 2022, he had COVID? I had forgotten he ended up having a rebound case. This case and his prior cases will make it into my COVID positive archive either today or maybe at some point tomorrow. I'm still behind on that. I've been trying to add two new ones a day. Eventually we'll get it down, but hey, this has been a long surge, and the Olympics definitely did not help. Something else I want you to read. Fauci is actually urging people at risk to keep masking to prevent COVID-19. Take this seriously, he says, and I do agree with that, but I would actually take it a step further. I think everyone should be masking. I get it. There's some that don't want to. Fine, but I think given how bad this wave is right now, if you know someone who is positive for COVID at the moment, you should be masking. That's all it takes because one case can lead to you going on to developing long COVID. Moving on now to the UK where contagious childhood illness sweeps the UK as NHS warns that children should stay home from school. Parents across the UK are raising the alarm about hand, foot, and mouth disease, which is commonly mostly in children under 10. Yes, it's making its uh, rounds in the UK. After all, it is the back-to-school season there, and uh, I believe they started long before us. We'll be starting up in a few weeks, so I'm sure there will be several different viruses making their rounds in the schools here, including COVID and whooping cough. And, you know, measles is out there. Hopefully that doesn't spread even further. There's a lot of different viruses right now, and schools can oftentimes be a super spreader for them. Some people are not going to be happy that I'm sharing this article. Some may say, eh, Maybe he's learning the hard way, but here it is. Aaron Rodgers says he regrets claiming he was immunized to COVID-19. In case you forget, Aaron Rodgers, back when the NFL was requiring people to be vaccinated, stated, oh yeah, I, I, was, I was vaccinated for COVID when pressed about it. Turns out when he had COVID about a year ago, it turns out he did not get vaccinated for COVID, which quite frankly, I think is ridiculous. Why lie? Be honest and say in the beginning, no, I was not getting vaccinated. Well, of course, if he lie, if he uh, 
said he was not going to be vaccinated. I don't know. Would he have been terminated from the NFL? I don't know. Totally ridiculous, the whole Aaron Rodgers business with the vaccine. Clearly, he doesn't want it. and That, 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 that is his choice. Corona Heads Up said, U.S., more than half of states reporting very high COVID-19 wastewater activity levels. At least 27 states are reporting very high levels in wastewater. This is from ABC7 Los Angeles is where they're getting that from. And, of course, we look at wastewater here all the time, and we will take a look at wastewater today. We're going to look at some uh, wastewater sites today. Not much to show you on my site today. This is the Olympics thread. We ended it with... Uh, we ended it with what is going to be the the total tally from the Long COVID Foundation. I think that's going to be the best way to end that thread. Uh, I'm glad the Olympics are over, but I do have one quarrel, one little issue. The Paralympics are next, and these are people that are at more high risk with COVID. I hope we do not start hearing about cases at the Paralympics, or else we're going to have a problem. And my website, again, is data report dot info and if you want to add anything there or if you're searching to find something about any of these viruses go check it on my site we do have a search bar you can type in a whole bunch of different things you can type in whoopi goldberg you can type in long covid you will find long covid stuff actually but look at that look at all these long covid things that pop up you're getting wow Look at this, over 30 results, and there's six pages worth of results. Yes, it is a wealth of information for you to go find something that you're looking for, especially if you're doing research. All right, moving on, poll levels for today. National levels are not looking too good. It says 32% of the country in medium status, but look at this map here. There's a lot of orange showing up. Red is showing up again. I'm starting to notice the pollen come back as well, and I did not take my allergy medicine today. As soon as I'm done here, I'm taking my allergy medicine. Take a look at this. Uh, Massachusetts and parts of Connecticut, red, parts of red in Michigan, the Dakota, especially North Dakota, all of North Dakota is in red. So you can see the Northern Plains, uh, the Southeast, there's some yellow and orange mixed, even some green in Florida, Southern Florida. Pacific Northwest is not as bad as they were earlier in the season. Let's take a look at air quality levels across the United States for today. And we can see here, mixed bag but there is one thing that we need to point out that it's very important yes there are still isolated areas with maroon and red in the pacific northwest and california this is a much better looking map than it has been let's say even with this california oregon it's a much better map. it's not as widespread with the oranges and reds but there's still a lot of work to be done that needs to be improved wildfires continue to be an issue then we see this little gap where things are good. Colorado, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico. Southeast, mixed bag. But take a look at this. Not actually fully sure what is going on in upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, and it looks to be coming from Canada. Do we have a wildfire up in Canada or even up here in Wisconsin or Minnesota somewhere? I don't know. I'm going to be doing some research because it would appear to me with the jet stream, with the flow of air coming out of that direction, uh, it's spreading something that's disrupting air qualities in that area. Heat-related illnesses. Yeah, they actually went up in the past week. You can see here, there's quite a few bad areas. West Coast improved a little bit. Central region got a little bit worse. The east didn't change all that much. Maybe actually a little bit worse. Yeah, still a problem. Want to learn more about the climate and weather? Want to see me tweet about the wildfires, which I'm going to do in just a little bit? It's Climate Data Report over on X. All right, Philadelphia yesterday. I'm not happy about this. We did not have bad air quality yesterday. We did not have extreme heat. We did not have humidity. What do we have? The summer surge of the coronavirus. But yet the city reports low levels of hospital emissions. And here we are, 855 EMS incidents yesterday. There are several reasons why this could be high. One, long COVID. Two, the baby boomer population age. Uh, the population is starting to get up there in age, and they're requiring more use of health care. That could be part of the problem, but again, 855 EMS incidents on a perfectly sunny day that was not hot. Imagine if it was stifling hot yesterday. It would have been over 900. Not good to see that. Live looking at Montgomery County. Oh boy, I'm seeing some calls I don't like. Now, there's not a lot of calls. There's 13 calls, but take a look at this. Not one, two cardiac arrest calls at the moment. We have stroke call, respiratory emergency, cardiac emergency, general weakness, 
He had a lot of different calls going on there. How about Chester, oh my, Chester County, Pennsylvania? There are just a slew of calls at this time. I'm seeing multiple sick person calls, emotional disorders, hypotension, exposure to heat. Maybe there are heat-related illnesses. It is only 82 outside, and the dew points are relatively low. Heart problems. Yeah, not good. It's busy times right now. Let's go a step further. It's Tuesday. Wastewater update for Pennsylvania. And we can see here, there are still some orange areas. We're not seeing any large increase areas. That's good to see. We also see a lot of no-change areas. And we do see one decrease area. And that one decrease area is in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Delaware County, Pennsylvania now reports wastewater for COVID is rising. Chester County down near Westchester Site 1 is rising for COVID and wastewater. We do see things have stabilized up in the Lehigh Valley, up in Allentown, Pennsylvania. York County, Pennsylvania reports an increase. Stabilized now in Harrisburg. That's good to see. We do see that there is an increase in Westmoreland and Armstrong County. Then when we go up to here to near Bradford, Pennsylvania, McKean County, they are reporting an increase at this time. Moving on now, taking a look at Maryland. I want to show you the divert statuses in Maryland. And again, yellow means the emergency departments are temporarily overwhelmed with patients. And wow, just in, this is region three. We see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve hospitals diverting their ERs right now. And red alert, what's red alert? The hospital has no ECG monitor beds available. These ECG monitor beds will include all inpatient critical care areas and telemetry beds. So, yes, it is really busy in Maryland. There are other regions. I think region 1, 2, yeah, this region's not doing too bad. How about the uh, the other region? Let's see what's going on there. Uh, region 5. Uh, region 5 does have some uh, emergency department visits on divert as well. Not good. And we can actually take this a step further and currently there are five units statewide ambulance units that are held up at a hospital waiting to discharge their basement because the emergency department doesn't have a bed at the moment wow that that's just not a good thing and we can see here yep here's a couple, southern maryland hospital there is one unit sitting there right now 299 minutes length to stay i don't know how accurate that is but moving on let's go over to walgreens now and we can see walgreens the positivity rate this week did drop a little bit, but take a look at this. Uh, total tests. And remember, we showed you that tweet from Sci-Fi yesterday that shows a different number. So who knows? I don't know which number is actually the correct one. But what I can show you here is that total test did go up. 11,620 versus 11,089 in a time when not as many people test. Michigan, I want to show you what's going on there. 46.4% positivity rate. The prior week is 38%. That is up by 8.4%. Total test, 179 versus 166. I hope we can report to you Michigan cases tomorrow. Iowa this week, 50% positivity rate. The prior week was 35.1%. Difference of up, 14.9%. Total test, 30 versus 37. How about New Mexico? Or how about Arizona? Arizona, 33% this week, positivity rate for COVID. 42.5% last week. That's a difference of down 9.5%. And 218 versus 254 test. Coming up here to Oregon. Oregon sees positivity rate rising. 47.8% versus 35.3%. Difference of up 12.5%. And that was 23 tests versus 17. Washington, 42.7% positivity rate. 50.9% uh, last week. That's down by 8.2%. 117 total tests versus 110. Let's go somewhere in between. Tennessee, 36.7% this week versus 38.9% last week. That's down by 2.2%. Total tests, 502 versus 419. Good to see that they are dropping. Alrighty, moving on. In Canada, the viral level for COVID is moderate. Flu A, flu B, and RSV low at this time. All right, let's take a look at a few wastewater sites, starting off with Orange County, Florida. And take a look at this. Orange County, Florida was, you know, dropping relatively quickly. Then all suddenly they hit the brakes, and now there's a slow, steady increase happening once again. Yes, a reversal down at Disney. 
that get yeah, not good somewhere else where that's having a reversal and we've showed this to you several times and i'm going to show it to you again newark new jersey is a big wastewater site and i do need to refresh this apologies because that is not coming up to what i saw just a few moments ago before recording here we go and i hope that orange county florida was correct but take a look at this on a most recent update as of august 7th newark new jersey 1.5 million population wastewater site is now rising once again not good to see stanford connecticut was looking at this a few minutes ago i actually tweeted this take a look at this now mind you this will correct right later in the week but look what's happening here rapid rise once again in stanford connecticut not a good thing to see now let's go somewhere else that is further to the west let's see what's going on in california let's go down to san diego Hopefully we can see San Diego dropping. Eh, overall trend still upward. We don't see a sustained drop just yet. And this is a huge wastewater site. 2.2 million population. So that's something that's not good. New Jersey for today reports 569 people in hospital. And we can see here it was slowing off, but last couple of days it's starting to go up again. 70 out of 70 hospitals reporting. Nine people on a ventilator, 57 people in the ICU, discharges, 43 at this time. New York State, kind of a mixed tale here. COVID cases are still dropping. You would think, well, hey, COVID cases dropping. That's some great news. It is, and they're dropping pretty quickly. But let's take a look at the hospitalizations, which should have peaked today. Sometimes on Tuesdays is the highest report of the week, and it is just that. Not only is it the highest report of the week, 1,000. 276 people in hospital with 139 people in the ICU. It is higher than any point last week. Yep, last week the highest number was 1,255. There's a reason for that. And no, it is not because of New York City. New York City remains peaked. New York City continues to drop. Remember, they had that LB.1 variant, which probably was a very significant wave. And maybe that's providing some sort of immunity. But there's something going on elsewhere in the state. Let's go to the capital region. Let's see what's going on there. Look at this. Oh, capital region. Uh, the last update was 54 hospitalized, 10 in the ICU. Suddenly today, 78 people in the hospital, 16 in the ICU. Now, this could quickly change and go back down again tomorrow, but it's something I want to make you aware of, of what's going on. Look at the central region. Wow. This is really bad. 34 hospitalized, 8 in the ICU. Today, it jumped up to 56 hospitalized, 11 in the ICU. You get the idea. This increase is not because of New York State or because of New York City. It's because of what's going on elsewhere in the state, which did not get hit all that hard. Here's Western New York, 53 hospitalized, 4 people in the ICU. Let's take a look at North Country. We've been following that closely lately. And North Country actually did drop that's a good thing 39 in the hospital three in the icu and how about long island what is going on there long island also reports an increase today but it's not as high as the 231 where they peaked last week today is 230 with 26 people in the icu and let's also take a look at mohawk valley see what's going on there that is dropping at this time and how about the southern tier region and i know we've probably missed somewhere that did go up today that is higher than anywhere last week so new york city at this time if you live in new york city you've peaked you're dropping but elsewhere in the state is rising and that is why we saw a statewide increase today We'll have to see if it continues tomorrow or drops. Given statewide cases are dropping, you would think this starts to drop soon. Remember, it does lag, but it's been over a week and a half now since cases have uh, dropped. And we have seen a few areas where the positivity rates, or not positivity rates, wastewater levels were rising in New York State. Something to keep an eye on. Uh, tomorrow, we will have some more states. We'll maybe have some more data in the south. And hopefully, we'll have Michigan's cases tomorrow as well. Oh, and one other thing I did want to show you today. It almost slipped my mind. Virginia, massive increase in cases this week. 6,727 versus 4,275. That's a big increase this week. And they also did see in the emergency department, it was... It went up a little bit, but it did not go up as much as it did in the past few weeks. Here's the emergency department and urgent care visits. And you can see here, it did go up, but it's starting to slow a little bit. 
Hopefully that means they are going to peak relatively soon. Diagnosed COVID visits, 4,525. And when you add in the number of COVID-like illness, wow, 9,383 people with COVID-like illness at the emergency department and urgent care. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Tuesday edition of the Pandemic Update. We'll have another update again tomorrow. If you like this update, give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below, hit that notification bell, share this video with anyone you know, leave your comments down below, and ways to support the channel and my work are also listed down below. Thanks for watching. I will see you all again next time. Till I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Tuesday afternoon. Thanks for watching.